Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to The Geek Group. Today we're talking about one of our latest projects, The Geek Group's Camera Crane. This is awesome. It's just fabulous. To buy a real professional camera crane is about $100,000. We've built this one for well under a grand. And it's got all kinds of neat refinements, including something that normal ones don't, an automatic scan mode, because we kind of repurpose some stuff. Now I'm going to give you a little history on this. Uh, we started making videos around 2006 back on the Shipper Street Lab and a lot of you you've seen the old videos of like the 2006 big open house and all that stuff and we decided back then that with such a big room and, and all the space we had we needed to have a camera crane because just having a big jib is awesome. So we built this one and unlike most of the cranes you see it's just a single tube and a little tiny control wire. This doesn't have all the reinforcing stuff because we don't need it. We're not shooting with 50 pound RE cameras. We use little cameras like this. And because of that, a five inch aluminum tube with a quarter inch wall thickness is great. And we can get, we've got about 12 foot, I think, on the whole thing. It's balanced so perfectly that just taking the weight of a regular everyday lighter, and if I put this out on the end, the crane goes down. It's that well balanced which is kind of cool. You can move the whole thing with just a fingertip. This is the fine adjustment balance here. So if I move this out like that, it'll drop in a hurry. If I put it back to the other end to let go, it'll go up. And this is an important feature to have because it makes life a lot easier when you're working. I'm going to leave it a little heavy out here. It makes it a lot easier to work with the crane because you have to change around cables and plugs and stuff like that. When we set up from one camera to another, it can radically impact the weight. So for fine adjustments, we have this, and it works just like a triple beam balance. On the other end, this is where all the controls are. Now we've got the usual cables hang out here. And this is stuff like this is the video feedback and then power and control and stuff. So these all hang back here to keep them out of the way because this is a giant gimbal. And it's all just made from aluminum. It's one inch thick aluminum stock out here and it's a simple mount. We threaded down under here and made some clamps and that. This was all done before we had CNC, which made it suck pretty bad. Um, here's the big weights out on the end. And these all bolt on. I'll spin it around a little bit here so you can see it. These all have a big bolt on the back. You can take that off. And then we've got just a basic monitor on top that's always been just, we grabbed this, this monitor, you don't care about color and stuff like that, so this monitor is really, really green. We grabbed a broken monitor, because all you care about is what you can see in the shot. The video doesn't actually come back here except to just see for like a viewfinder. It's actually recorded in the camera down here. This is just a little JVC of Ario, and it's, it's your regular Handycam. It's nothing special. Um, this is what we use for all the crane shots. And you just set it up, hit record, and you're good to go. We can do zoom in that via an infrared remote control. And one of the cool things is the infrared we use on the little consumer grade hard drive camera is the exact same infrared as an, on the nice professional cameras we have. They're all JVCs, so we can just swap stuff around. Now this is where you get into high geek points. Mr. Kidwell made the controller for the camera. Here, this is the, the box that is the brain for it and I'm just gonna let it scan back around. It's got, it was originally designed as a security camera system, so it's got a scan mode built into the camera with a, a limit switch that bounces back and forth. But we needed to have a joystick to be able to control it. So he took an old school Atari joystick. This is a Wiko command control model. And it's a little wonky, the cable's a little chewed up, but it works good. And you can grab the joystick and move the camera. And I'm waiting for it to get back around to the middle, which it's on its way to, right there. Now, with the joystick, when I pull back, the camera goes up, like that. You push forward and the camera goes down, and you can use this for setting up all kinds of shots. Now, it may seem like it moves really, really slow, but you have to understand, when you add this with the control of the crane, like if I want to shoot something, if I want to bring the crane up and I'm shooting forward, now, I'll move the camera forward, and to keep up with that, the crane has to move that fast to keep the shot level. So because it's such a long lever, it evens out in a hurry. And it may not seem like it moves very fast, but it, it adds up when you're on the crane. The problem is when you're doing a shot 
where you're looking, you're, you're passing by something close and you're coming from way far out here, you want to move slow to get that pan. And then when you get here, you want this to actually move pretty fast. So you'll see some weirdness in this when we use it in certain shots, you'll see because we can't change the speed. So you'll see some issues simply because of the, the geometry involved. When you're coming from out here, when, when you're more perpendicular to the subject, you want the camera to move rather slow. But as you get closer in, you want to speed the camera up. So you'll see some of that effect in our shots and that, and we're still learning how to use this and get all that working. But this is all made from just stuff from Alro, just simple. The only thing we actually had to buy was this. All the rest was just scrap parts and drops that we had laying around. It's really simple. It's three big bearings. There's the two little bearings that do the up and down, and they're not like super high-end bearings or anything. They're actually pretty generic, cheap industrial bearings. These are the, the up and down bearings here. And I went to the industrial surplus store up in Grand Rapids, and I bought this just because I have a passion for really big bearings. I think bearings are cool. And this is a gigantic roller bearing that I bought for like five bucks at the surplus store. And it's smooth, it's great, it works wonderfully with all this weight. So we put that in there. And the bottom here, everything from this point down is actually called a pedestal. It's an old school, like this is probably 50s or 60s vintage television station tripod. This is what they use in television studios. And you'll see these like if you watch uh, any of the late night shows, they, they show a lot of pedestal shots, you get to see them. But that's, that's what this is for. And there's a feature on it that we're not using, which is the, a z-axis, an up and down balance, where if you put a lot of weight on this ring, it'll balance this up and down. But we have, we've got to hang about 300 pounds on there to do that. And then on the bottom, there's a wheel on each corner. And by turning this, you can steer. So like right now, it wants to roll left and right. And if I turn this wheel 90 degrees, it'll come at me. See, and now we can go front and back. So this is designed to roll really smoothly. And if you have one person pushing, one person operating the crane, and one person operating the joystick and the viewfinder, you can do some really amazing stuff with this. But right now, it takes us three people to make it work. So that's the basics of our camera crane. Now, the little control wire here is used to maintain, basically, it's a parallelogram. If, I, if you look down here on this end, and I pull on a control wire, the camera goes up. And the idea is this is adjustable left and right and up and down on that end. And by adjusting this wire, we can change the geometry so that it maintains the camera level as we go up and down. Now, it's not quite perfect right now. It's a little bit off because we had it set up for a different shot. But that's, you can see the basics of how it works. There's a big pivot here. And it's just a bolt with a bushing through this block. And this maintains the aspect for the camera. And the whole thing hinges nice and easy right there. And we've got two levels here for calibrating stuff. There's a level here and a level here. And when everything's perfect and everything's happy and they're all in level, it just works. And you don't have to mess with it. So it makes our life a lot easier. But yeah, that's a quick look at the Geek Group Project Camera Crane. It doesn't really have a name. It's just the Camera Crane. And you're going to see this used in a lot of videos. And if you pay attention, you'll, you'll see it. This is usually set up in the back of the room showing the whole set. And it's our, our cutaway camera crane. So yeah, that's the basics of it. And uh, you guys have fun. Come on down. You can get some time on using this. We, we definitely need more camera operators. So I'm Chris Bowden with the Geek Group. I'll see you guys next time.